JBN, we keep you informed. Woman whose body was found in a barrel in downtown Kingston identified. The woman whose body was found in a barrel in downtown Kingston on Wednesday night has been identified. She has been identified as Brianka, a resident of Denham Town in West Kingston. Sources said the female was attacked, held, and her hands and feet bound before she was killed, and her body placed head down in a barrel with debris being placed on the remains. Reports are that the youngsters were observed transporting the body on a handcart at the intersection of Peckham and Beckford Streets were carrying the remains to dispose of it at an undisclosed location. The youngsters fled leaving the cart and its contents after members of a police team saw them acting in a suspicious manner and instructed them to stop. The police said they are still searching for the persons behind the deadly attack. Sources believe the woman's killing was the latest in a series of attacks being carried out by criminals in and around sections of West Kingston who are locked in an ongoing feud. Four accidents in Anova on Tuesday. The Anova traffic police were kept busy following the accidents which all occurred under wet and slippery conditions. The first incident occurred along a section of the Point Hill Main Road about 2 p.m. involving a silver Toyota Corolla motor car. Reports are that the driver was heading from Montego Bay towards Hopewell when he lost control of the vehicle which skidded and crashed into the guardrails. The driver escaped with minor injuries, but the vehicle, which was extensively damaged, caused a major oil spill and resulted in traffic coming to a halt while firemen washed the substance from the roadway. Minutes later, the driver of another Toyota Corolla motor car ran off the roadway along a section of the Ramble Main Road. Two occupants sustained injuries. As showers continued to pour down in the parish, an industry motor car, which was traveling from Lucy to Green Island, also crashed. The driver, along with three passengers, received injuries. Then about 4 p.m., the driver of a station wagon, which was transporting passengers, lost control of the vehicle while traveling along a section of the Sandy Bay Main Road in the vicinity of the Trial Housing Scheme. The vehicle crashed into bushes off the side of the roadway. Anova has recorded two fatal motor vehicle accidents since the start of 2020. And the Anova police say they are again warning motorists to cease from speeding and to proceed with caution when traveling in wet conditions. Entertainer charged for mowing down woman. 48-year-old entertainer Orville Dennis was on Tuesday charged with assault occasionally grievous bodily harm. He is scheduled to go before the court on March 27. Dennis, who is of a terminal road in Old Arbor Bay, St. Catherine Address, has been accused of using his motor car to mow down a woman with whom he had a dispute. The police said the incident happened about 10.30 p.m. on Thursday, January 16. According to the police, the woman suffered a fractured leg and was taken to the hospital for treatment. Three men charged for gun-related offenses. Three men are to face the court to answer to charges laid against them over the past three days in three separate incidents. Following the first incident, which occurred on Friday, January 11, 22-year-old Howard Birch, a construction worker of Portmore Villa in Gregory Park, St. Catherine, was charged with shooting with intent and illegal possession of firearm and ammunition. Police reports indicate that about 10 a.m., a police team was on operation in Portmore Villa when the accused and two men were seen in front of an unfinished building. The police approached them and they allegedly opened gunfire at the team and fled. Birch was subsequently arrested in another operation on Tuesday, February 25. He is scheduled to appear in the gun court on Wednesday, March 4. Detectives also charged 35-year-old Robert Cherrington, otherwise called Nina Brown, of James Street in Kingston, with illegal possession of firearm and ammunition yesterday. Brown was charged after he was searched by officers on an operation in his community about 8.05 p.m. and was found carrying a Smith & Wesson 9mm pistol with a magazine containing seven 9mm rounds of ammunition. He was subsequently arrested and is scheduled to appear in the gun court on Friday, March 6. Meanwhile, officers in St. James charged 19-year-old Patrick Williams, otherwise called Neil, of retirement, Granville in the parish, with illegal possession of firearm and robbery with aggravation. The charges stem from an incident which occurred about 2.30 p.m. in Guinea Tree in the parish on Monday, January 27, 
where the accused and another man held up the complainant with a gun and robbed him of $26,000. Geisel Murder Free, says Dakers. The Geisel Police in Northeastern Catherine has managed to rack up an enviable record of not having a single murder in their division in two years, way below the national average of almost five per day, and they are bent on keeping the streak alive. What makes it more impressive is that they have achieved this with only one service vehicle, making the rounds in 38 major communities spanning sections of three parishes, St. Anne, St. Mary, and St. Catherine. The secret to their impressive record, according to Sergeant Delroy Dakers, is an active community policing strategy. The truth is, we have not been having any reports of serious crimes. We haven't had any murders for two years now, the sergeant said. Don't take their word for it. Ask the residents and the picture becomes that much clearer. There are some hardworking policemen at that station. We are happy with how they conduct themselves and it gives us residents confidence when we need to talk and share information with them, said one elderly gentleman who gave his name only as Dads, Kareen Williamson was being employed for more than 25 years at the Guys Hill Postal Service also approves. Yes, they have been good for the area and they are actively doing what they are supposed to do as the police. But in spite of the proud record, the Guys Hill Police said there are a few things they could do well with to make their job a lot more comfortable. Topping the list is the need for another vehicle, which they said would help to slash response time, particularly in distant locations. As it relates to the unwelcomed tally of reported domestic abuse, the Geisel police receive at least two reports per week and they are keen to help citizens mitigate those also. What we found is that these domestic abuses or domestic violence cases have a lot to do with the socioeconomic realities of the people. The focus should be brought to bear on that, said Sergeant Dakers, who was vowed to give it special attention. The reports keep coming in, thankfully, None has ended in murder, but be reminded that domestic abuse also involves squabbles between rival siblings, husband and wife, parents and children, said Dakers. Boasting of the brand new four-wheel drive service vehicle assigned to the station, Sergeant Dakers said, while not the ideal, they make it work through proper community policing and the scheduling of patrols in the various communities and quick response when called upon by residents. For example, if you went to Dillon Town and Casa Kelly, both St. Anne communities yesterday, you don't necessarily go back today. So our planning is vital and we are doing well, said the sergeant. Further, he said the police contingent has brought into the idea of serving the people wholeheartedly, even when they are undermanned or lacking significant resources. The citizens, he said, have also played their part in helping to maintain the peace through effective communication. We have been encouraging the residents report any strange faces in the area, whether relatives of other families or not, because once anyone moves into the community, we try to keep an eye on them, Sergeant Dakers said. Adult male and teenager charged for Stony Hill murder and shooting. The St. Andrew North Police are reporting that two of the three suspects who were recently arrested in relation to the murder of a man and the shooting of four persons in Stony Hill St. Andrew earlier this month have been charged. Charged with murder, wounding with intent, and illegal possession of firearm and ammunition are 22-year-old Deshanti Dunkley, otherwise called Chokel, of Stony Hill St. Andrew, and a teenager whose particulars cannot be publicly released. The Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, confirmed the charges on Wednesday afternoon through its Twitter account. Allegations are that on Wednesday, February 12, at about 6.30 a.m., the accused approached a group of men standing in Stony Hill Square and opened gunfire hitting them. When the shooting subsided, 26-year-old Shamar Wall of Golden Springs, St. Andrew, and four other men were found with gunshot wounds. Wall reportedly died on the scene while the others were treated at hospital. According to the police, Dunkley and the teenager, who were among the three persons arrested, were charged on Tuesday, February 25, after they were both pointed out on an identification parade. The third suspect was released, the police stated. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember, subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.